Hi, my name is Nick Burnham and I'm here for Motorboat and Yachting today at Ocean Safety in Southampton having a look at the contents you might want to consider having in a grab bag. Now a grab bag is a bag that you keep for a worst case scenario. So if you're on fire, your boat's sinking, you need to get off in a hurry, this should contain everything you need to get yourself rescued and also look after you in the meantime. It's worth having a dedicated grab bag. This is exactly the kind of thing because first of all, it's highly visible and secondly, it is waterproof and it floats. And the other thing to consider with a grab bag, of course, is, it, is the location. It absolutely must be somewhere where it's easily seen and easily got. You don't want to be looking for this in an emergency. You need to know exactly where it is. So you've got your grab bag, you're getting off the boat. Now, depending on where you are and the size of your boat, you might be getting off into the dinghy you might be getting off into a dedicated life raft. But there are certain items that you want to consider having in order to get yourself safe and rescued. Now, the first of these is, of course, actually making sure that people know of your situation. And the most obvious thing for that is one of these. It's an EPIRB. And what this does is it sends a distress signal on the satellite frequency. It lets people know that you're in trouble. You register this so that people know who you are, and they can then get the appropriate emergency services to you. And what's really clever is that this sends out a homing beacon as well, so if a helicopter or a lifeboat is headed your way, they can lock into this and track exactly where you are. There are different types of these. This is the sort of thing you'd have for the ship in a grab bag, but there's also this fellow here, for example. This is a, a personal locator beacon. This works in exactly the same way, but it is small enough that you can keep that on your uh, life jacket, for example. So if you're single-handed, that's well worth considering. Now there is also a man overboard beacon. This is slightly different, and you'd normally have this fitted to people's life jackets. And the idea of this is that if you go overboard, this sends out a signal using the AIS system, and that puts a man overboard alert up onto your navigation screen. So if someone falls off your boat, it should tell you A, that they've gone over, and be where they are. And the reason that's relevant to a grab bag is because it doesn't just put it up on your screen, it will put it up on any screen of a boat that is in the immediate location. So that is an alternative way of letting people know that you're in trouble and projecting that to boats that are nearby. Another method worth considering, of course, is the good old VHF radio, but the important thing to consider with the VHF radio is that the batteries are fully charged. It's no good having this in the grab bag for two years and then finding that it's flat. This one's a particularly good one because it floats, which for obvious reasons is a benefit. And also, this has a built-in GPS. It uses the MMSI system so that you can use a distress button on here and that will send out your position and the fact that you're in distress over the VHF radio. So that, again, well worth considering. Finally, of course, there are the more traditional methods, such as flares. Now, these are traditional flares. You can have either smoke or rocket flares. They're pyrotechnic, and indeed there's even this sort of thing, which is a buoyant one. This you throw overboard, and it chucks out a load of orange smoke and lets people know that you're in trouble. Now, there are also, more recently, electronic flares and these use very very bright LEDs. Now there are pros and cons to both of these. Um, these are less visible in very bright sunshine. They're fantastic at night and they do work during the day but they're not quite as visible as something like a smoke flare. However, obviously they're not pyrotechnic and that can be an advantage in a life raft and also they'll keep going for a lot longer. So it's worth considering where you're boating, how you're boating and which of these is most suitable and chances are it may even be a combination of the two. Now having got your life raft and hopefully summoned help you need to then consider yourself and the people in the life raft and how you're going to survive. Um, again it'll depend where you're boating, how far offshore you are, what latitude you're at, as to what sort of equipment you might need but one thing you'll certainly should have in your grab bag is a decent first aid kit. You don't know what's going to cause the situation for you to find yourself adrift and afloat, so a decent first aid kit will help you deal with that. But also, things like seasick tablets, very important. It's a, a terrible situation and uh, very stressful, 
and those, if someone's feeling seasick, are absolutely essential. But then beyond that, you need to consider how you're going to keep yourself fed and watered. And again, it will depend where you are as to uh, how much you may need of that. But certainly, you should have water in your grab bag. Uh, these are water pouches, and if you have these, of course, you'll also need something to drink the water from. But they certainly ought to be in there. And also, there are this sort of thing. These are uh, high-energy food, basically. They're like biscuits, but uh, very, very concentrated. And again, depending on how long you'd like to be, but those are things that are certainly worth considering having in your grab bag. You also want to consider people's personal medical situation. So, for example, somebody who needs an inhaler, well, you might not want to be going looking for that in an emergency situation, so having a spare inhaler in the grab bag is well worthwhile. And other medication as well, there might be all sorts of reasons why people might need backups of medication in the grab bag, where it can be got if it's needed. And then finally, a couple of other items you might want to consider include a torch. If you're boating at night, that is going to be really, really helpful to you. You also want to think about things like glasses, spare glasses. If you need glasses and uh, you find yourself without them, those are pretty essential. Now you also need to consider what's going to happen when you finally get rescued. What personal items you might need. If you're abroad, well then, passports. Keeping your passports in your grab bag is a, a very sensible uh, solution to finding yourself in that situation. You also might want to consider credit cards and you also might want to consider some cash. They're all things that could prove essential once you get ashore. And again, you need to tailor what you're carrying depending on your location. So for example, if you're in the med, well then sun cream. Definitely need to have some sun cream in your grab bag. Uh, if you're in colder locations, well then you need to make sure that you've got decent outdoor clothing in the vicinity of a grab bag, so that in that situation you've got something to put on and wear when you get into your life raft. And talking of life rafts, if it is a life raft that you're using, well then you need to consider that most life rafts have got safety equipment in them, which you may be duplicating. Now that may not be a bad thing of course, but it's worth checking the contents of your life raft, find out what it's got, if it's got flares, well then how many flares do you need? If it's got water, well then you might want to consider how much water you want to carry. But again, you can duplicate, you can back up, or you can tailor it to individual requirements. And in fact, on that note, it's worth considering that when you have your life raft serviced, there's nothing to stop you asking to have items put in. So if you wear glasses, and these are items of course that don't go out of date very quickly, there's no reason at all why, when your life raft is serviced, you can't ask them to put a spare pair of glasses in there or other medical supplies that you think you might need.